Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to make hammer, which is the next section I'm building after the power here. So the hammer is like the first section I'm building that actually is TNT that gets shot out of the cannon. Um, but the hammer isn't the TNT that breaks the wall or anything. It's basically the TNT that you need to stack sand because sand doesn't stack by itself. You need to shoot it down to the ground using TNT called the hammer. So basically right now the power goes here and I'm going to turn this into an actual barrel first. So I'm just going to show you how to make a stair barrel. And basically the only two blocks you need in a stair barrel are just the stair and a block to stop the power. Like you don't need any blocks over here. And basically the power is going to end up there and get stopped by the trapdoor. And then the uh, shot, the, the stuff that gets shot out of the cannon, is going to go on the slab part of the stair, like I said in the last video. And it's going to get all three velocities, and it's going to go in triangle. So to make the actual stuff get shot into the slab part of the stair, you need what's called a slab guider, which is basically like this. And the stuff you're shooting into the stair gets pushed against the bottom of the slab, which means it's going to be like in between these two blocks and it's going to fit exactly into the slab part of the stair. And this is the smallest way you can make a stair barrel. But if you want to float the other way, if you want to float this way, you, you can't have any blocks here because the shot's going to go here now when you want to float this way. If you want to be able to shoot backwards and whatnot, you have to be able to uh, have a barrel like this because for example if you want to shoot if you want to float this way and then shoot this way which is backwards for this cannon you break this and the power would go all the way here and the shot stuff would be in the stair here and finally if you want to shoot backwards and float the other way it's like that um so i'm just going to have a three by two barrel which means i can I can flip it 180 it, but I can't shoot backwards. But if you really think shooting backwards is important to you, then you can do it. So for everything you want to shoot out of the cannon, you need a little area where there's a booster that boosts it into the barrel, basically, under the slab guider here. So the, I'll just show you the old way people used to do it. So they'd make like an area like this, and then they'd have a hole. And then back here is just another four wide section where the hammer is, just like how the power is with infinite boosters. You'd have boosters here, just like the power, and the hammer gets put here and it gets boosted here into here. And you'd have a ladder. And then what you have is you drop a booster like here or here behind it and down from it. So when the booster explodes, it's going to give it up velocity and forwards, which means it's going to triangle up, hit the slab, so now it's aligned to fit in the stair and then go forwards into the stair. So that's one way you can have things boost into the barrel. And just for the hammer, usually people don't do the hammer like this anymore. They might do other other sections of TNT like this, but usually they don't do the hammer in a way that's more compact than this. So instead of that way, I'm going to show you the main way people do hammers now. And basically, I'm just going to do this. So it's a 3 by 2 barrel, so it can dual float. Um, and I'm just going to add another slab guider right here. Basically, it's the same height. And if you have a smaller barrel, like it would be here instead, and this would be one in. But uh, I'm having it right here. And I'm just going to basically show you the whole section that I'm building, the whole booster area, and then I'll explain what what's going on with it so basically I have a 3 by 2 area like this and the slab will come over here you're gonna have the hammer right back here and like the same deal with the boosters and then the hammer here and the hammer is gonna get boosted to this block right here under the slab and you're gonna have a booster right here that drops right here. So if you look at this, it's kind of like its own barrel 
because you can see that the hammer, which is the projectile, is up from the booster, it's to the side, and it's forward, so it gets all three axes of exposure. So if you watch the last video, you'll know that it has less velocity this way than it does forwards because you can see that it's only one block to the side of the booster on this direction, but this direction it's two blocks difference from the booster. So it has a greater difference this way, which means in this scenario, it's going to get more velocity this way, which means the east-west patch is going to do that direction last. So it'll go st the east-west patch says it'll go straight up until it hits the slab, and that makes it in the right height. And then it's going to go sideways, because that's the direction that has less velocity. It'll go sideways until it hits a block, and then forwards until it hits a block. So we basically need a block here, which I'm just going to use a ladder because that has a width. It's going to hit the ladder and then go forwards now into the stair. You can't do it with a 2x2 two two area because like, it's getting the same velocities these both directions, so it might not triangle the right way first. You don't want it to be going this way first and then sideways because it'll never go into the stair. So you want a 3x3 three three area, 3x2 three I mean, and um, one last thing, you can make this even more compact. Instead of having the power or the hammer come in here, you can have the hammer come in a hole here and then stop it with a ladder like that. So it, it'll come in like sideways basically. So that's what I'm going to do. That seems to be like the most good way to do it right now. And I'm going to make the hammer section. It's one block up because I need it to be you need to maintain the one block up. If you build it on the floor, it'll never be able to be boosted up because the the booster is also on the floor and you don't want to go into the floor because then you might as well just make everything up one. And then I'm just going to make the section like this long or something. It doesn't really matter. And now I'm just going to put the same kind of infinite boosters from the power video on this side. And the reason it's on this side is just because I need it to get boosted this way eventually into here. So if I have them on this side, it would never be able to get boosted this. It would get boosted this way and not this way. So I need them here. And basically, you want to have blocks here. So if this is the hammer, it's going to get boosted all the way to here. And then the last booster is going to get boosted here and be behind it. So it's going to get boosted into here. Um, and honestly, Usually what I do is I actually put a carpet here so the booster ends up kind of diagonal to it, which it's still going to go this way and into the wall, but um, for some reason, well, I know why, but on this, this sometimes will blow up on wine, so don't just don't do it. And I'm just going to put carpets like this and make the infinite boosters just exactly the same way. So now basically I need to wire this booster, which means I need to get the the wire from the button all the way out to the boosters, uh, which, yeah, it, it has to be 15. And guys, like, honestly, it's I'm worrying about width a lot on here. Like, I'm going to go under the boosters, which is a valid way to do it. But uh, if it's your first cannon, you don't really have to worry about width that much. Like, who cares? It's not even a very important aspect anyways. But for this, I'm just going to show you, like, a modern like layout anyways so I'm just gonna go under the booster so now I'm just gonna make sure it's like 15 or whatnot and then yeah I'm basically gonna do something like this and the booster gets wired like that and then from here you can do build helper and then just go straight up and this can be where the hammer actually powers from so the hammer itself you need about 300 TNT to stack 255 sand. So I'm just going to have 300 dispensers and they're all going to drop into here. So they're all going off at the same time. So you actually need all 300 dispensers. You can't have like 150 and pulse them twice because if you pulse them twice, it's they're, they're going to be happening at different times and you're just going to have two sets of 150 TNT. You can't, you don't want that. You actually want 300 all at once. And yeah, so you can't have... It's starting on this block, but it can start on this block here. 
and stack 14. Like you can have a two-sided hammer where it's 150 on each side. Okay, so I basically wired up the entire thing of dispensers. And if you want to know how much is in it, you have you can select the whole thing with world edit and then do slash slash count 23, which 23 is dispenser ID, and it'll tell you 300, which is what you want. And then also one more thing, when when th these get powered, the ones that get powered directly at the last row, um, they're going to power this block and it bud locks this one, which means this dispenser will only dispense once the first time you ever fire and then they'll get locked forever. So you can't really have them there. Um, it's just a thing with repeaterless wiring. So I'm just going to do it like this. And these get powered because it gets powered from above. So I moved it down a couple of blocks just to get a nice height for it. Um, and it's also because, you know, like the reason why I did a small section on the bottom and then a lot more on, on top instead of making them equal is because this is just exactly 15. So the redstone limit is right here. So it doesn't need a repeater anywhere in this part. It basically just powers all of it without a repeater going up here. So it's just a little thing. And I'm just going to power, it's going to be repeaters like this, you know, and it's just going to power a block, which powers everything. And then the same thing over here. But this, of course, they're they didn't line up, so whatever. And I'm just going to put random ticks on it. And then I'm going to do a node counter. So the timing of the hammer, this is really important. It's going to be three ticks, three redstone ticks after the second power for a normal cannon. And that's what I'm going to do now. And I'll explain like later hammers and one revs later on. But for now, it's just three redstone ticks after the second power. So I'm just going to use node counter. This is the zero again. And I'm going to select this for the power. And I guess I'll just also select these hammers, like the redstone there, and then fire. And you'll see when the second power is going off at 14. So I actually, so right now it's only one after. So I need two more ticks because 14 plus three is 17. And the hammer needs to be on 17. So it's three ticks after the second power. So now the hammer is the right time and you can see that gets boosted out and it just goes here and it explodes here because there's no booster yet that boosts into the barrel. So now I'm just going to build the actual booster that boosts the hammer into the barrel. So it's going to be above here because remember the booster goes here and so it can have the right positioning to triangle the, the hammer into the barrel. So um, for amount of TNT for the booster honestly like if it's farther away you, you need more because you're going farther but um, I'm just going to put kind of a lot because you want to have more at first and then you can always subtract until you get an optimal amount, but you don't want it to cause issues by not having enough. I'm just going to do it like this and I'm going to show you how to wire, how I wire boosters. Basically I just wire it with like this too long wiring, which is just kind of cringe, but you know, it's less blocks. So everyone does it, of course. So yeah, it's... This actually works as long as you put redstone there, or if you are annoying and think that's ugly, then this works too, but I'm just going to do that. And um, you see I instinctively place a ladder because when, when there's booster here, when it's on auto, when there's booster here, and like the next shot on auto dispenses for the next shot, right, and it's falling, when this one explodes, it might shoot all of these back up and you don't want them to go out of the top. You want it to be locked in. So you need to have a ladder here and this will just spawn this TNT under the ladder. So it doesn't really matter. So for the timing of the booster, first of all, which of which of the two powers, because you shoot twice, right? There's two powers in this cannon. Which of the two powers did the hammer go with? It goes with the second one because remember from the fusion video last, last time, um, the hammer needs to end up above the sand at the wall, which means you shoot the sand first with the first power and let it fall, and then you shoot the hammer with the second power, the later power. So therefore, the timing of this booster must be before the second power, right? Because 
you need to boost the actual stuff into here before the second power ever goes off. So it's before the second power, but if you think about it, the booster can't be so early that it's also going before the first power because um, basically if it was before the first power, what would happen is the hammer would get boosted in here before the first power even exploded, which is the earlier one. And whatever explodes first is what's gonna shoot it out. So the first power will shoot the hammer out, which is the wrong power. It needs to be going with the second power. If it goes with the first power, it'll be the stuff, it'll be falling at the wall and it'll be the lower stuff. And so you won't stack any sand. So this must be after the first power, but before the second power. So now if you look at the node counter, you can see maybe we could have the booster on 13, right? Because 13 is after the first power, but before the second power, which is on 14. Um, but that does actually have a problem. That would work for shooting the hammer out, but it has a problem because we're going to have sand that goes with this power, right? We're actually having the top sand, the, the one-shot sand, OSRB or OS sand, is all going to be going with the hammer shot. When you have a stair barrel, what's going to happen is the sand is going to get boosted onto the slab here, and it's going to see that there's a sl it's in a slab. And what sand does when it falls down onto a solid block is it'll break it'll it'll turn into drops basically so to stop that from happening you need the booster to just be one game tick before the second power or half a redstone tick before the second power so it's going to just be on 13.5 instead of 13. and the reason why it needs to be just one game tick before the power is that for stair barrels and this only applies to stair barrels basically if the sand is shot in here more than one game tick before the power it'll start falling. By the second game tick, gravity will be applied, which means it'll just fall into the slab. So if you just do it at the first game tick, it's before gravity applies. It's when it's still in the game tick where it's just floating it above the slab. You might be wondering how to get an actual game tick because this seems to be the smallest timing you can get because it's that's two game ticks. One redstone tick is two game ticks. One game tick is half a redstone tick, right? So that's two, four, six, eight. It seems like you can only get even game ticks because you see everything's even. But basically, if you do this, if you do two redstone pistons, this is five game ticks. So this is how you can get an odd number of game ticks. This here is four game ticks, two redstone ticks, and this is six. So this is in between these two in timing. So this is how you get an odd number of game ticks. This doesn't work, this here, is just six game ticks. You can't have a repeater between them, but this will work. This is five game ticks. So you just need two redstone pistons next to each other. So now I'm just gonna actually finally do it. So I'm gonna add a node here, and I'm just gonna have temporary wiring. For now, that's just gonna be disgusting, but it's just gonna be here, and then I'm just gonna go down like this and then just guess the amount of repeaters and here I'm gonna have the two redstone blocks and basically just connect it like this and then if I fire we'll just see what timing is on we're aiming for 13.5 so right now it's 12.5 and you can see it is in fact an odd number of game ticks so that did actually shoot it out because it's after the first power, but um, that wouldn't work for sand. So 13.5, and you can see that the, the thing goes in here for a split second and then it's gone because it gets shot out. So now it should be getting actually shot out. So I'm gonna make an actual like adjust and then see if it goes to the test wall basically. So there it is. I guess you didn't see it, but um, you saw the explosion boxes. So I'm just going to lever it to see if it works. And you got to remember that the power is exploding all here. So if there's stuff around here that's falling very close to the power, like we already have a shield here, but like if this hammer was a lot closer, you might need a shield here or else like it would be getting shot out. And you have to make sure stuff isn't getting shot out. So like if it's spraying, I'm just gonna explain some basic troubleshooting, like problem solving things 
basically um you should try turning stuff on and off because like if it sprays like this right with everything on you should try turning off the hammer and for example if it still sprays that means what's left on is causing it so that's just the power or maybe the booster is causing it but if it stops spraying after you turn off the hammer that means the hammer was causing it and you have to just make sure that these boosters are timed right where it's not like they're going off before the next one's falling and like but it does fall in time so you just have to find like the right heights or timing for the boosters and stuff and then it shouldn't spray so the last thing i'm going to do in this video is i'm going to show you how to add the one shot sand and in this uh booster layout basically there's only one spot you can have it and it's going to be above here now this is what i do personally um, and it has to be above here because you need the sand to be coming out into this block because that's the block that the booster will give the right velocities to to triangle. Like if you had it here, which I saw in someone's cannon recently, if you have it here, it's the booster is just going to shoot it that way. It's not going to go into the barrel, okay? So you need this and basically for most people they're going to have uh, like a one shot sand, but if you just need one sand, you're not overstacking, you just need a piston. Like you could have it lower, you just need a single piston to push sand in. But if you have multiple sand, like if you're having an OSRB or overstacker, basically you need a, a, a cobweb, which all the sand falls into together. And then these two pistons, which are gonna scrape the sand out of it and push it out into here. And you also need ladders here. And if I put a bunch of sand in here, you'll see that it just scrapes them all out and then you know pushes it all into that one block. So for now I'm just gonna have this one sand and I'm gonna make it red. And basically, uh, if you want the short and sweet version, basically you need to push it out 37.5 ticks after this booster, okay? So this is on 13.5 plus 37.5. It needs to be on 51. This needs to be on 51 and it's so late because you're waiting all the way for this TNT to explode, and it takes TNT 40 redstone ticks to explode. So you have to wait almost 40 redstone ticks from when it's dispensed till when it explodes. But what's good is like cannoning is not about ticks. You don't need to memorize that. Basically, what I'm going to do is just show you how to find it yourself. So I'm going to stack 10 and wire it off the booster. So basically, if you fire, you just need to see that if it's early or late. If it's early, it's going to get pushed out before the booster explodes and fall all the way down. So that one actually looked like it was the right time by chance. But if it was early, it'll look like this, basically. You see it falls all the way down. And if it's late, it'll just be after the booster or it'll get flinged off some weird direction because it was like pushed still getting pushed out so as you can see it's actually earlier than 51 and it's getting pushed out kind of early it's falling all the way down if the reason why i said 51 or 37.5 after this booster basically is because if you have you see it's it's also like not ideal if you have stuff in this web it's going to be lower and it's it might turn into a block so once you this might work for now but once you add the osrb sand it might need to be retimed again so i'm just going to retime it now honestly based on the number i said so but you probably shouldn't think about a lot of things like that because that's kind of silly you should just retime it when you need to and that's 50 so i need one more because i actually went back a tick so i i forgot So that's 51 and it should look, it, it, it'll look good if it's like the right timing and we're going to see like if it goes here, you can see there's a bunch already. So yeah, so, and then one last thing before I test the auto on it is like, again, when this, there's going to be falling blocks here and the power is exploding right here and this will definitely get affected. So honestly, like I know it's ugly, but I'm just going to put a shield there and then I'm just going to lever it and then see like if it's putting out a sand every shot and if it works or not basically 
So you can see that it's putting out the sand and a hammer every shot. And this is the sand that would end up on top of the regular sand. So other than that, that's pretty much it. Other wirings work like this, as long as it goes into a block. As long as you power it from the back, basically. Um, other than that, that's basically it. That's how to shoot stuff out of the cannon. Um, hammer and sand. And uh, basically, I'm going to make the sand comp in the next video. So I'll see you then.